And Obama's White House, by the way, was a revolving door for celebrities. Do you remember the policy summit he had with rappers Common, Buster Rhymes, and Ludacris about criminal justice reform? Well, you probably don't, because the left-wing media didn't freak out over it like they did when one guy goes into the Oval Office yesterday, Kanye West, joining us now with Reaction, double standard extraordinaire here, of course. Howie Kurtz, Howie, of course, uh, Media Buzz, great show on the weekends on Fox. Howie, this is wild, because I remember when Kanye came and he did his poetry slam at the White House, and, I mean, I, I mean, truth be told, I actually kind of, you know, laughed at it, because I thought the poem was really bad that he did on stage. But Obama was just really at ease with celebrities, and obviously they loved him. No one cared. Obama's celebrities, Obama's rappers, they were, they had the approved ideology, so it was okay. The media kind of celebrated it. Look. What Kanye did in the Oval Office, it is fine for critics to say it was weird, it was strange, it was bizarre. Even Donald Trump seemed kind of speechless for a moment. But the brutal nature of some of this criticism as a result is clearly driven by ideology. Um, when Kanye West was talking about George Bush doesn't care about black people, uh, all, a lot of I these liberals... I criticized him for that. Yeah, but a lot of these liberals said, oh, he's a really cool dude. And now, because he's wearing the red hat and he's embracing Donald Trump, he must be loco. What are the chances, like, next week he'll be wearing, like, a Cory Booker hat? Like, is there any chance of that whatsoever? All right, Jackie Spire, I want to play this for you, Howie. Um, Congresswoman from California said this about, um, well, Kanye and his mental health. It was a combination of stream of consciousness. I felt like I was sitting in on a psychiatric visit and a commercial for Donald Trump. Uh, it wasn't newsworthy, certainly, but uh, I would suggest that the, the president uh, should maybe... Uh, curtail these kinds of engagements. Well, Howie, 36 percent approval of Rasmussen among African Americans. That's double from last year, same poll. It seems like they're more worried about Con the Kanye effect on the midterm elections than they are about Kanye's mental health. Well, here we see the mental health issue being brought up again. And, you know, in addition to the Congresswoman, it seems like the harshest criticism is coming from other African Americans. You played Don Lemon dragging yep. Kanye's late mother into it. CNN contributor Tara Setmeyer said he was a token Negro. I haven't heard that phrase in, in decades. Decades, and literally. And so well, it's rooted in the notion that if a black person, black people uh, who are for somebody like Donald Trump, they can't know what they're talking about. They're completely misinformed. They're, they have serious issues and all of that. And that, you know, they no longer have a monopoly. And so the piling on here against Kanye West, who's an entertaining guy, who, as you say, probably don't know all that much about politics. Well, but more so than who? He, Matt Damon? Uh, yeah, and he went there to talk about actually a serious issue, like his wife Kim Kardashian did. So I, the freakout is just so over the top that I think it can only be uh, written off as ideological opposition to a guy who thinks a little differently. We'll be watching Media Buzz this weekend, Howie. Thanks so much for Great being with you. us.